Hey guys, welcome to another interview here with the containment unit. My name is Matt. I'm here with my buddy Tom, and we have a very special guest today, Eldo Ray Estes. Eldo, thank you so much for making time to meet with us today sure. and uh, entertaining us in our silly questions and signing some autographs for our group. Sure, my pleasure. My pleasure. Sure. So, all right. So, Tell us about, so back 1983, 84, somewhere in there. Yeah. How, how does young Eldo get connected and show <laughs> up in Ghostbusters? How does that work? Well, I was, I was in college in New York. And at that time, I thought that I wanted to be an actor. And, uh, you know, you just put your name in with a couple of uh, casting agents that cast background actors. It's kind of a way to get a start. And I remember, I think it was October of 83, maybe, got the call. I remember getting the phone call, didn't know anything about the movie, because of course there was no internet. So you don't know anything about, you can't Google things and find things out. And I was hired to work four days on this film and I was paid $50 a day, <laughs> didn't matter. I think the first, day was a day shoot and then we had like three night shoots or something like that if I remember right and um I just remember getting up and I don't know why I figured I'd wear that uh purple tie and uh and of course you have to wear the same thing every day and I just went to work and there I was had no idea what was going to happen and um, I have a lot of different memories about those days uh, when we were working and how it all worked out. And it all, the whole thing just, just amazes me. It just amazes me. I mean, people always ask about the, the hair because um, obviously that's not my hair color. But there was, a, there was a, a musical group at the time that was very uh, popular called the Thompson Twins, way before your time. But the lead singer had hair sort of like that, and I really liked his hair. I mean, it was a lot more punky, but I was coloring my hair that color because of, I think his name is Tom Bailey of the Thompson Twins. And it just, you know, just kind of a thing I was doing then. And like I, continued to, I continued to do it for a little while because when the movie came out, I was, you know, being yelled at on the street daily because people were recognizing me. Because I think your official title is un Uncredited Redhead, I think is what I saw on IMDb. Yeah, because yeah, my name is not in the credits, although it really should be. I agree. <laughs> it should be. It's interesting, though, like as a fan, uh, you know, it, we there was a time in life where we didn't necessarily know your name, but right. we know your face because you are all over that, right. that, that, that section in the film. Well, the, the baffling thing about it... Um, because we didn't really know what was happening. We didn't know that there was gonna be a giant marshmallow man coming down the street. They just told us to run up and down the street and act crazy and yell and scream and all that stuff. But at one point, I guess it must have been the last day, they physically, um, they placed me there in front of Dana's building. Um, I guess, you know, they liked the way I looked or whatever. So I was actually placed in that spot. And um, as soon as that scene was done, they immediately sent me home because I was guaranteed to be in the movie. They didn't want me to be seen more than once because I was so noticeable. So once they shot that scene, they sent me home. So I knew, I knew that I was gonna be in the movie, at least that one little snippet. But I mean, I'm in the business now. There are editors and somebody edited that movie and somebody knew that I was going to be all over that last 30 minutes of that movie. <laughs> I mean, I actually sort of even have an arc. If you really notice it, I think the first time you see me is when I'm standing on the steps of the church, when the ghost bus, the, they pull up and I, I, I just act like a, a fucking lunatic. I, I don't know why I was jumping up and down like that. But then, the, it, you know, it goes through the whole night and the whole thing. And then I'm actually in the last frame of the movie chasing the car down the street, it's like, <laughs> but yet they sent me home after that one shot. So I was thinking, oh, I'm just gonna be in there that one time. Who knows? It's interesting <laughs> that you mentioned the going crazy thing because uh, recently on Twitter, there has yeah. been uh, something like one of those things that trends, but it's 
give me other movies where an actor has only one scene, one line, and nails it. And I have seen <laughs> your scenes twice. <laughs> Not only was it the Ghostbusters, all right, uh, right. but then somebody yeah. countered that and said, while we love the Ghostbusters, all right, we love this better, uh, yeah. where Eldo just goes, absolutely loses the mic. I know, I, I know. I mean, I guess I, you know, I wanted to be seen, but obviously I did. Um, yeah, yeah, who, who knew? But it was, it was funny, the movie uh, came out, I guess that was like the spring of 84. And, uh, you know, movies open on Fridays. I think they still open on Fridays. And my roommate at the time, she and I both had to work on the Friday that it opened. Uh, so we made plans to go and see it uh, the first uh, showing on that Saturday. And it didn't, you know, it had only played one day. And we were, I swear to God, I'm not making this up. We walked out of our apartment and we're walking like three blocks to the subway. And someone on the other side of the street yelled Ghostbusters at me. And I turned to my friend and I said, well, uh, wow, something's up. I mean, it was the second day that it was open. <laughs> And, and, and yeah, in New York it, with all the it, people and they noticed you. Yes. I mean, I was actually in Brooklyn at that particular moment, but yeah, someone had seen it the day before and they remembered me seeing me jump up and down. Crazy, crazy. <laughs> that is. So uh, just a nerd question. Sure. You, you, you're you wearing a very distinct tie, purple tie. Yeah, yeah, I, I know. Where is the purple tie today? I don't know where the purple tie is. <laughs> Um, I sort of, I think I was going through a purple phase at the time. I wore a lot of purple. Uh, don't know where that jacket is. I wish I had the pants that I had on. I, the pants, you don't really see them in the movie, but the pants were really great. I don't have those anymore either. Um, I wish I had the purple tie. I could probably sell it. <laughs> <laughs> we know yep. some people who would probably buy it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. So let me ask you this then, um, you know, the, the movie you shot again, 83, and, and when it came out, you know, people recognized you and your hair. All over um, the place. So how, think about like, how has the movie, has it impacted you since it came out over the last 30 years? Like, has it been something more than a well, favorite? I, mean, party I mean, obviously nothing really happened until the advent of the internet. You know, so you go from like 84 to what, 98, 99, 2000, you know, there was the VHS tape and, you know, that, that sort of a thing. But it wasn't until the internet came to be, um, some friends of mine discovered there was a Facebook page. I don't think it exists. Or no, not Facebook. Yeah, Facebook page. I'm not on Facebook anymore, but there was a Facebook page called the Overacting redheaded extra or something, I don't know. There, but there was a Facebook page simply dedicated to me. And that was when I really started digging, digging around and finding all sorts of stuff on message boards. And yeah, it's, and it seems to be picking up more, more steam all of a sudden. I'm um, supposed to go, I was supposed to go to Glasgow to do a, a convention with these great guys in Scotland. Of course, it keeps getting pushed because of the pandemic. Um, uh, no, it wasn't, I guess it was, I, I, you, you lose track of time because we've kind of lost a year here. So I guess it was the previous summer. There was um, some group that does a Ghostbusters tour of New York every year. I went and like did a guest appearance on the tour for them. Um, That's cool. And this, those, the great documentary, although I'm not sure I made it into the documentary. Um, I think I'm in the extra section on the DVD. I don't know. I, I, uh, I interviewed with those great guys, the Buenos, Anthony Bueno and his lovely wife. They interviewed me, oh my gosh, I don't know, probably five years ago, but it took them a really long time to get that. You know what I'm talking about. It took them a really long, really long time to get that together. I'm not sure if I'm actually in the finished movie. I think my clip is in the, uh, extra scenes. I don't know. I don't know why they didn't put me in there, but they did interview me. Yeah, so yeah, there's, the, there's lots of stuff going on. And I said, it seems to be, it just seems to be growing in a strange way. That movie does not die. You know, <laughs> little, you know, little kids are, st you know, still watching it. And it's really only the original one. 
they can keep making Ghostbusters over and over again. It's that first one that really counts. And it's one of those movies, there's not too many movies that are like this, but it's a movie that you can turn it on and no matter where it is in the movie, you can just plug right into it and you know, just jump right into it. Like just dropping the needle on the record. It's one of those movies because everybody knows it, everybody loves it and you want to see that, you know. I'm proud to be a little piece of it for my 200 yeah, bucks. Absolutely. But... <laughs> <laughs> so is this like, so talk to us like late nineties, early 2000s. Mm -hmm. um is this like something how would you kind of just drop this did people kn know did your friends know that you're in this oh, no. or is this like something you would just kind of no no because i you know I, I discontinued the dreams of being an actor very early on so uh, i was pursuing other things um in my late 20s and then you know switched to something else and so that wasn't really anything that i wanted to talk about too much because i'm not I, I was not a working actor so i never really especially because i work with actors the last thing i'm going to do is tell them that i wanted to be an actor that's you know you don't you don't tell sharon stone that when you meet her you know it's <laughs> stupid um so i never really talked about it much my my you know my brothers and sisters uh, obviously know about it and they you know have showed it to their children and my high school friends that I still keep in touch with, you know, they'll like, you know, call me, oh, it's on TV tonight, blah, blah, blah. But no, um, not a big thing, but now constantly, because if you, you know, if you Google my name, you get a plethora of stuff and obviously Ghostbusters is there. <laughs> um, so yeah, more people know about it now than they used to. I noticed uh, perusing your IMDb page. Uh, I noticed that you did some makeup for the Murray, uh, the Bill Murray Christmas special for Netflix. I did. So I, you know, you, I did not work with him, and I did. <laughs> no, no, I did. No, I didn't. But I did one time. I rarely, because I work with you know a lot of uh, celebrities, and I'm, and when I worked in retail when I was younger in New York City, I waited on a lot of celebrities so I'm you know very good at like maintaining my cool and, and not being a fan but a few years ago I went to see oh, I can't remember the name of the play but I did go see Sigourney Weaver in an off-Broadway play and I, I love Sigourney Weaver like you know love her and I I don't know why I did it but I waited <laughs> I waited to see her backstage and I just became like a bit of a blathering idiot. And she just looked at me like, oh, that's nice. She had no idea what I was talking about. Uh, it didn't, didn't click with her. She didn't remember me. <laughs> well, and that's, that's actually uh, what a lot of people may not know is that now you are a multiple award-winning makeup artist. I am, I am. For, I am. for a lot of big names. And I, and I could have said that to Sigourney, hey, I'm legitimate. <laughs> so but i just went off the deep end <laughs> so how, how did you get there so you start out as an actor and then how did you get into this um, part of filmmaking well everything everything in my life and my career has been very accidental i'm a very uh, believer that the universe makes all these decisions for us you know they, the uh, things are plotted out and good things happen bad things happen but it all kind of works out and i, I just kind of let it go um when i was uh around the time shortly after Ghostbusters came out, I completely by accident uh, got a job in the cosmetics department at Bloomingdale's. Uh, I wasn't seeking it out. It, it came to me through a friend and I, would, I needed a job and blah, blah, blah. And uh, you know, there's a very, very social aspect to, to working in retail cosmetics. And you know, I guess I had a certain amount of charisma and uh, I, I just really liked that that thing and i guess i got fairly good at the skill um but it's really a lot of it is just about the the human interaction and the ability to communicate and make people feel at ease and i did that as my survival job while i was pursuing other things yeah, i just happened to be doing that to pay the bills but i didn't really care about it um and i often say the reason why when i decided to to try to take the makeup a little bit further, the reason why I was able to do it successfully is because I really didn't care about it. Meaning it wasn't something coming from my heart and soul. If I, if I made a mistake, I didn't care, I just fixed it. I, I, so I was very fearless about it. And it, it happened really fairly quickly. Um, uh, I went to work 
on a soap opera. Um, they liked me, they kept me there, I got in the union. I mean, it all just happened very quickly. Um, I was just very, very fortunate. Yeah, well, very, yeah, I'm, very fortunate. I can fangirl over Ghostbusters, but my wife and I, like, I'm not even just saying this because we're talking to you, we are huge fans of Younger, which I know is <laughs> a big show that you work on. Oh, yeah, it's and, my big, been there since the beginning. And it's, we're, we're about to wrap up the last season, which is kind of sad, but I mean, there's not much more story to tell, but right. yeah. Yeah, so, it's, a, it's a good one. It's one of those little jewels. There's so many networks and shows, a lot of people, if you don't know it, you don't know it, but those that know it really love it. You know, it's got a really passionate audience. So if you don't watch Younger, you need to binge it and get caught up and- Exactly, see, tune in. Season, season seven will be out probably in the early summer, I would imagine. I noticed when I was again perusing, I, I really loved uh, Living With Yourself, the, the Paul Rudd oh, series. Yeah, that, that was a very hard job. That was a very, very hard job. Very, very hard for Paul Rudd. Um, it was a really difficult job. There was never any intention for that to go more than one season. He, he sort of, with a little wink to me one day, because um, Ashling B, who was the really lovely Irish woman that played his wife, who was delightful. She was um, saying one day in the makeup trailer that she had been contracted for three seasons. You know, she was like really hoping it was gonna go for three seasons. And uh, Paul looked at me and winked and said, <laughs> you know, he wasn't, it was too much work, too much work. He, he was, but yeah, it was great. I'm proud of that too. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty proud of all my projects. One real, one real clunker movie, but good things come out of all of them. You, you meet a nice person, you meet a producer or something, as long as you bring something good uh, with each project. I just don't know what's next. Yeah, well, I think that's kind of the state where we all are, just kind of waiting to see. Yeah, and it's kind of exciting. I mean, it's exciting to not know what you're going to Well, actually, I do kind of, oh, I'm going to just drop a real crypt, cryptic hint because it's something that I think oh, I don't want to say it. But I have been asked to, of course, any job, no job is real until it actually starts. That's just the nature of the business. But I have been asked to do the makeup for one of the three women that are gonna be doing a very uh, exciting sequel to a film they did 20 years ago this summer. That's all I'm going to say. I'm leaning in and my, I, my wheels are turning. Because, because I think a lot of people that are listening to this interview probably know what I'm talking about, but I'm not gonna say it. I know exactly what you're talking about and that's very awesome and I, yeah, of course. <laughs> I hope uh, I hope that pans out. That I hope so cool. too, because she's a lot of fun, and I, I really, really enjoy her. She's on Younger. She she's a recurring character on Younger, and she's snatching me along. So there, you can look on Young. You can look on Younger and see who I'm talking about. There you go. There you go. So well, hopefully that hopefully that's going to be in the summer. Yeah. That'll yeah, be. Go ahead. No, no, I was just I you know, we're talking about everything on hold and we don't know what's coming next. I mean, we've, you know, it's just a movie, obviously, but you know, the, the Ghostbusters, the new one they're doing, you know, it's been delayed now a few times. And yeah, I'm just hoping, I mean, I, I really, I'm, I don't, like, I didn't see the, the female one. I just had no desire to see it. I love Paul Feig. I worked with him and would love to work with him again, but I didn't. And the funny thing is when I worked with Paul Feig, I asked him, he isn't, wasn't even a Ghostbusters fan. He kind of floored me. Like he didn't, he had no recollection. He knew nothing about the first movie. I thought I was gonna make his day, but he, you know, he directed that movie with like a clean slate in his brain. Anyway, um, but what I'm curious to see, cause I have seen the trailer for this new one. And there's a lot of things where the guy's uh, Googling and I'm just dying to know if I'm in the footage. <laughs> It's on his computer. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. 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 I'm, I'm like, come on, surely I'm going to pop up in there. But You're going to check for that Sony. <laughs> I don't, probably not. Well, yeah, I was with some friends of mine, right? Currently, right now, we have to sit out on the sidewalk in the cold, but uh, the bar, they have a big screen TV in there. And they all laugh about it. But a couple, at least three times, we've been in there on a Friday night and Ghostbusters is on the TV thing. And we all joke that we play a game that every time you see me on camera, you do a shot. 
So yeah, I think there's about I think there's about eleven times that you see me um, throughout the uh, last section of that movie. When all those at the bar and Ghostbusters is on, everyone gets plenty drunk. I, I just <laughs> I, I just keep popping up. It's so funny. That there's probably something... one that I missed. There, there, that gives me something to do later today. So thank you. That'll be yeah. a fun game. Yeah. And the for thing all is, it, to play. It, it wasn't until much later someone. It must be. I have to look on my. You can find the interview. I don't know which company. It was a horror film guy. Whatever did a great interview with me a couple of years ago. Um, it's on the on, on the web. But he was the one that pointed out to me that you see me chasing after the ectomobile as it's. I'm in the last frame of the movie, and it's crazy. Yeah, I'm like running down the street. Like, this guy has his own motives. He's got his own like story going on. Yeah. Well, yeah. You, you, you shut it down. I mean, you put the, <laughs> the final touch on a on a classic. So that's so that's fun. pretty cool. It's Eldo Reyes and then Slimer flying away. There we go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, we did. We didn't. We were told that was going to happen. I don't remember ever them saying that this Marshmallow Man was coming down, but. You know, they did, they had the police car there in the street and it came up out of the street and, um, and we were all just running up and down. Funny, funny. It was a fun and time. These, and all these years later, you have two guys like us asking you questions, people wanting uh, your autograph and getting invited to Scotland. I know, I really want that to happen. Those guys have been so patient and it keeps, you know, it keeps getting delayed. Um, it was gonna be in June and then it was in November. But this is this is going to clear up. We're going to we're going to get back to. Uh, I'm I'm confident that we will we will get through this. Absolutely. I got to get to Scotland, and I'm I just, it's going to be a whole new chapter of my life. Mm -hmm. So Gorney's not available, but I am. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, Elda, we are so thankful for your time. We're so thankful that you'll be signing for our Great. group. I would love to. It's so exciting and fun. And we just, we really, really- I'm very really curious to see what you're going to send me to sign. <laughs> <laughs> we'll keep you on your toes. One of your All 11 right. shots for sure. <laughs> yes, yes. All right, that's great. This has been fun.